Hello and welcome back to Albert vs. The Asylum. Today, we are talking about one of my favorite Asylum movies ever. That's right, you've been waiting for it, I've been holding off on it, but today it is time to dig into the masterpiece, the classic, the unimitatable Abraham Lincoln vs. Zombies. Our story opens on Abraham Lincoln's parents being chased through the woods by the undead. This is how the pioneers played hide and seek in the old days. The next day a young Abe Lincoln finds his dying father and zombified mother and has to put an end to both of them. Hey! That scythe costs good money! Kids today have no respect. And the title of the movie is... Abraham Lincoln vs. Zomballs. And after a short montage of Civil War footage, we cut to Abraham Lincoln as a grown-up in the White House dealing with writer's block. Wait a minute. What about the training montage? What about him finding out about the world of the zombies? When does he get a stupid axe that's also a gun? Oh, wait a minute. That was the other movie. The one that cost $69 million to make and still sucked. In this version of the movie, our Abraham Lincoln is played by the king of B and C movies, Bill Oberst Jr. And I'm not just being a giant hipster when I say this guy is way better than like 90% of the movies that he's in. And unlike that other movie, this Abraham Lincoln actually looks old enough to be Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, what a novel concept. Oh, and speaking of things that this movie gets right that the other movie did wrong, we get a short scene here between Mary Todd and Abraham Lincoln. And it turns out their relationship wasn't this lovey-dovey whirlwind romance. I mean, who could have guessed that? Other than anyone who ever read anything about the relationship between Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd ever! Abe hears the story of a new zombie attack from a man who's in the process of turning into a zombie himself. He makes plans to go to the fort where the zombies have been spotted in order to keep the infection from spreading. If it spreads too far, it can decimate the population. I don't know. I feel like we could stand to lose a tenth of the population. I mean, it's not ideal, but I've heard of way worse apocalypses. But then the zombie breaks free, and Abraham Lincoln is the only one who knows how to deal with it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, it's Abraham Lincoln. Shouldn't he have an axe? Abraham Lincoln had an axe, you guys. But, this is actually incredibly clever. Because axes are big and heavy and bulky, and they're not great melee weapons. You get one swing, sure, you're knocking the head out of that zombie, but then you have to pull that axe back and swing again. With a little side like this, you can decapitate dudes all day long and not lose your energy. The Secretary of Defense tries to convince Abraham Lincoln not to go, but it turns out he's the only one with the knowledge of how to kill the zombie, so it has to be him. We need to leave as soon as possible. All right, men, let's go to the top of this hill and stand shoulder to shoulder. They'll never see us coming that way. Abe and his men enter the fort, but someone opens fire on them. As if that wasn't bad enough, a zombie just wanders in behind them through the door that they left hanging open. Dude, seriously, were you born in a log cabin? Identify yourself. Abe Lincoln kills the zombie and shoots the man who the zombie bit. And since this is a world where only Abraham Lincoln understands the rules of how zombies work, his men do not react well to this. How could you? Before they can ask too many questions, more zombies enter the fort. Listen up. 
Good it's minute. third down, and we only have 20 seconds left on the you clock, so I want to see you hustle out there. And once again, we'd like to remind you that this film is brought to you by Corrugated Metal. Yes, it's corrugated, and it's metal. What more could you ask from the perfect zombie defense material? It appears to be an ordinary pile of hay, sir. Show yourselves! I say, surrender yourselves! We have you trapped and you cannot escape! You're the idiot holding the lamp right by your face so they know where to shoot. Maybe you should surrender. I'm Thomas Jonathan Jackson. So it turns out that the rebel forces are being led by Stonewall Jackson. And he is not too happy with Abraham Lincoln just up and murdering people who he sees as innocent civilians. Abraham Lincoln. I had indeed hoped to meet you. Albeit under different circumstances. What are you talking about? Abraham Lincoln is leading a small band of soldiers to fight off a zombie incursion. These are the most radical circumstances possible. But of course, nothing could be more radical than the character we're about to meet. You've read the stories. You've heard the legends. But until now, no one has been brave enough to commit them to film. And so it is with great pleasure that I introduce you to General Stonewall Jackson's beard. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lincoln's men take General Stonewall Jackson and his beard into custody while they secure the fort against the zombies. We don't even know how many of those sick men are out there. They act like zombies. Like what? Zombies. A Bantu word I learned from my mother. Zombies were corpses brought back to life by magic. But they were only used as slaves. They weren't like this. I really like that they brought in the voodoo connection and tied it in with slavery here. It is so great when you can do that and simultaneously not blame one of the greatest evils in the nation's history on vampires, isn't it? Silence. The slightest noise, including gunfire, will awaken them from their standing slumber, bringing danger and death. One of the big differences that the zombies in this movie have against regular zombies that you may have seen is that these zombies have a resting state, where if they're not actively hunting something for a while, they go to sleep. And you can walk right past them without waking them up as long as there's no loud noises. Now, I know that this was done for budgetary concerns because you don't have the budget in an asylum film that have thousands and thousands of extras and make a giant horde of zombies. But it really does add a cool element of tension when you're sneaking around past these things trying not to wake them up. It's a neat little variant on the classic zombies that we already know, and I really like it. Abe's men decide to go into town to see if they can find a working telegraph. Hey guys, don't shoot! I'm not a- Please hold your fire! We mean you no harm! We entered your home so you can only temporary shelter! We knocked before we broke down your door! I mean, granted, you didn't say we could come in or anything, but still super rude. You'll stop right there if you know what's good for you. We come in peace. Abe? Yes? They find a woman in the house named Mary Owen, and it turns out that Abraham Lincoln once knew her. And when I say knew, I mean it in the biblical sense. Talking about having sex, y'all. And that fine young man is Teddy. Theodore Roosevelt, Mr. President, from New York. Yeah, you heard right. Theodore Roosevelt is in this movie. Here. As you go, walk softly and carry this big stick. You heard it here first, folks. 
Theodore Roosevelt first heard that phrase when he was with Abraham Lincoln fighting zombies. This place indefinitely and simply leaving is not a possibility. What we need to do is to kill all these zombies. Zom Man, Abraham Lincoln gets to say all the cool things. They go and see the zombie that the Confederates have locked up, and Abraham Lincoln gives the backstory of how he knows about the zombies. Mr. Lincoln, if I had a mobile guillotine, I would not inform you of its presence. Wait, are you saying that you do have a mobile guillotine? Because that sounds awesome! Does it have, like, blades that just stick out at neck level and you drive it around and just decapitate everything in sight? Do we get to see that? There's a plantation about a mile from here with many of the implements the kind you just described. We could go collect these and bash them into weapons. Yes, but do they have a mobile guillotine? Because really, that's all that we're interested in at this point. I believe this crisis is bigger than the matter which divide us. In the end, we are all Americans. That's why I'm fighting on the side that doesn't want to be part of America anymore. In any other movie, they'd make the kid stay behind, but this isn't any other movie, and this kid is Teddy frickin' Roosevelt, who is more of a man at age 10 than I will ever be in my entire life. How'd you come to find yourself in this circumstance? You afraid of zombie hunting or prostitution? Perhaps if we survive this ordeal, I could call upon you someday. <laughs> I've got some money saved up in a sock drawer at home. How much do you charge? <laughs> okay, who's the wiseacre who picked up a garden rake? Come on, guys. We're killing zombies here, not growing petunias. In the mad dash to escape, Mary gets some zombie blood in her mouth. Please, I'm so scared! I've been out here all night! This morning, with charity for none, and malice toward all, we shall endeavor to slay as many of these unfortunate creatures as our strength will allow. All right, the part of the plan where we stand in front of the door is working perfectly, you guys. Let's try the next part. Dramatic pose time! Emancipate this! We've done well thus far. Maybe we should head back to the fort, get some rest. I'm not tired. Once more, into the breach. Okay, now you're just being lazy. That's not even an Abraham Lincoln quote. That's Shakespeare. And you didn't even make it about zombies. I mean, maybe if you were near a coastline, you could say once more unto the beach? But even that's stretching it. Traitor, I do not take orders from Greybacks. If you want to stay here and die, that's your prerogative. This is the horrific struggle of the Civil War. Witness it here. Man against man. Blue against gray. Brother against brother. I am so cool. Here we are. No, stay here with me! I love you! you I've say? always loved you! I would say that this is the Teddy Roosevelt Abe Lincoln team up I've been dreaming of, but that one actually involves time travel and they go with Andrew Jackson to fight dinosaurs.
Wait, what? He jumped onto the tracks to run away from a train that shouldn't even be there because the tunnel's blocked. And... Oh my gosh. It's a ghost train. This movie has a ghost train. Never makes another appearance, but it's totally there. That is the only explanation for this scene. You thought it couldn't get any more awesome, but it just did. Mr. Wilkinson tries to kill Abraham Lincoln, but he hesitates at the last moment. If I kill him when he prays, his soul may go to heaven. Curse you, Catholicism! When all the men in my family in Paris started to join up, it just seemed the thing to do. Also, I really hate black folks. This zombie affliction, as Mr. Brown calls it, it's got me in the mind of slavery. It's wrong, but it's here. It should be dead, but it lives on. And if we don't find a way to stop it, not only will it tear this country to pieces, but it'll be the end of life as we know it. Once again, I would like to draw your attention to how the other movie handled slavery. I wonder, what are your plans when this great conflagration ends? Hmm? Well, I reckon I'll buy a dictionary and look up what conflagration means first. I have something to show you, Mr. Le Mr. President. It's my incredibly amazing beard. Would you like to feel it? Yes, that's right. All the firewood you can use. Cut and dried. I trust this may be of some use in your effort. It certainly may. We're all going to get into those barrels and ride down the river until we're away from those weird CG elves. Even during the zombie apocalypse, it's really important to get your cardio. <laughs> Little known fact, Stonewall Jackson actually died of lung cancer. The whole shot by his own men thing, that was just a cover up by Big Tobacco. Excuse me, Mr. President, can I get your autograph? Whoa, good thing I caught that. Somebody could have got hurt. Most of those men were Confederate soldiers. It's altogether fitting and proper that I should do this. Is this the line for the iPhone 7? Dude, you want to wait your turn? Hey, if you will note. No long remember what we say here, but they'll never forget what we've done. Yeah, they'll make a straight-to-DVD movie about it and everything. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proper. Of course, Abraham Lincoln delivers the Gettysburg Address, and of course, it's awesome, because it's the Gettysburg Address. After that, we find out Abe has kept Mary alive as a zombie. Because the only thing better than a hooker is a dead hooker you keep chained up in a barn. Doctor, this level of care is unacceptable. Yeah, well, this treatment isn't covered by your HMO. Mary? Naturally, Abe gets himself bit. Knowing he's going to turn, he sends a message to John Wilkinson, who... Wait a minute. Are you telling me that this has been John Wilkes Booth the whole time? What a twist! My first night out in such a long time, I want to make an impression, but... Oh, I look awful, don't I? Yeah, you do. You look as beautiful as ever, my dear. Unfortunately, you never looked very good to begin with.
So that was Abraham Lincoln versus Zombies. And it might be my favorite Asylum film ever. Yeah, the execution is goofy and silly, but the story is simple enough and interesting enough. The zombies are novel, and the portrayal of Abraham Lincoln by Bill Oberst Jr. is wonderful. All in all, it's not necessarily a good movie, but it is bang on exactly what I love about the Asylum. The right amount of cheese, the right amount of fun, and taking itself just serious enough to be awesome. Check it out. If you don't check out any other Asylum movies, check this one out because it is worth your time. Until next time, I'm Albert, and you've been watching Albert vs. the Asylum.